are so painful from a friend who the years became cold. The rest of the rose and winds in winter, but that wrote my disbelief that you could give up. Welcome back to Foulmouth Owl Show, old friends. I missed you guys. I missed you. Welcome back. Thanks for coming back, those of you that are back. Those of you who aren't back, we miss you. We wish you the best. Um, once again, this year, this season of the Foulmouth Owl Show... What the hell, let's just call it what it is. I took a big old hiatus, you know. Found out that I was kicking ass. Kind of took a big break. Had a few things going on in my life. Things have changed, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Things have changed greatly over the last few years. Yes, um, I've gotten divorced. When we started the show, I was married. <laughs> I don't know if the show had anything to do with me getting divorced. I was having issues, you know, several years. Um, my ex-wife is a great person. I love her to death. And uh, she's a great partner to raise my son. I don't think I'd be um, more proud to do it with anyone else. She's awesome. Uh, we just grew apart over time, and that's what it was. And it was hard for both of us that we were driving each other crazy and we both know that we both deserve to be happy. And we did our best. It just didn't work out. We did everything we could. And uh, to provide a better environment for our son, we have part of ways. When you do that, sometimes there's an adjustment period. <clears throat> and that's what you've just experienced in your lack of foul mouth owl and the nonsense that I've been doing here. But sometimes... In these adjustment periods, you know, you go through your, your tough times, the hard times. There's a big mourning, you know. Um, it's a sad thing. You're emotional. Feelings go up. Feelings go down. You get excited. You got new friends. You got new time. Things are filling space. Um, those people, sometimes they're new. They don't really know who you are. And, and everything you're going through, and they think you're a little wacky or whatever, and, um, you know, they weren't really your friends. They were here for another reason, so they bail. Um, and that's cool because everybody's different. We all learn and live, love, and grow together, like it or not. You might hate me today, love me tomorrow. You might love me today, hate me tomorrow. It's a love-hate relationship with the Foul Mouth Al show and Foul Mouth Al and crew. Speaking of crew, I am here alone today. There's good reason for that. Because this show is the Foul Mouth Al show. And um, it's a statement that um, my greatest and best friends are still my greatest and best friends. They're part of my life. They've watched me, walked with me, at times carried me through the last couple years. And I have no shame in saying that because we all get by with a little help from our friends. No time for masks or bullshit or none of that stuff, right? You find out who your friends are in tough times. You really do. You find out who they are and who they aren't as well. You know, there's a lot of things as far as friendship goes. Loyalty. Um... Tough love sometimes, which is what foul mouth owl is all about. I am not about cussing and being foul. I never really was a dirty mouth person until I started doing comedy and writing comedy. My, my comedy writing is extremely uh, dirty, um, but I'm cleaning it up and I'm getting some gigs in some cleaner clubs, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, 
you know, Foul Mouth Al has always been about bringing it to the table with truth. Sometimes not the most, um, you know, soft approach. And it is what it is. You know, I'm old school. I tell it like it is. No apologies, no bullshit, and no condoms. I never wear condoms. But um, anyway, I've gone through a lot of stuff. My business has changed. Um, I have a real estate business, which is my primary source of income. And I love my real estate business, and it rocks. And it is, uh, along with the market, starting to stabilize and make a comeback. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, dealing with uh, you know separation of assets and things from my uh, divorce. And that's been a, a nightmare um, every which way I turned. Phone keeps going off like crazy, but I appreciate my friends um, texting me, keeping in touch with me. I got a couple really good friends. Um, and, uh, you know, my house is up in the air. I'm trying to keep it from going to foreclosure or having to short sale it. Um, of course, everybody knows that the economy has been tough. And the last few years have been extremely tough on me being in real estate, um, starting a media business at the same time, um, which did not work out. Uh, we still have ExploreDE.com, not doing much with it right now. We have a handful of sponsors on there, and I appreciate those guys uh, for sticking around. They've been with me for years, and I support them as well. Please check out ExploreDE and all of our uh, sponsors and people that are proudly um, displayed on that page. But it's about, you know, my life has been um, torn apart. It's the first time I've been on my own ever. And, uh, you know, that's that's something odd for a 45-year-old man who has never experienced that. But, you know, I never paid all the bills. I never did the dishes. I never cleaned the house and all that stuff. So all this has been a, you know, a learning experience for me. But the fantastic news is that, you know what, I'm getting it all done. I am... Got, I am um, effectively working my real estate business. I have reorganized my life to where I am only doing stand-up comedy on the side as a hobby, taping this show. I'll be taping it uh, weekly, a couple times a month anyway. And in addition to that, um, people have been asking me about photography, and I'm not really doing that um, for a business, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, so my business has reorganized um, I'm getting my lifestyle back. I'm actually able to go out and start doing stuff. Thank goodness I've been practicing and developing a comedy act. And I'm um, getting some shows with that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I'm getting my life back in balance. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's back on track. It's headed in the right direction. And, um, you know, I'm glad that the air is clearing. You know, the dust is settling. And I really appreciate the few friends that I do have left. So uh, I do want to mention that Lowdown 302, Old Friend, is the song I started the show off with today. That is a song, a version of their song that I recorded here. Um, the official song for the Foul Mouth Al show, uh, of course, is a Lowdown 302 song. And it's known as resist because no matter what happens, no matter, you know, what goes on in life, you can't quit. You can't give up. And even when you're beat down and your friends or so-called friends try to, uh, you know, tear you down to their level, you can just let them go and watch them fall. That's all you got to do is resist.
Slow down 302 out of Delaware. There are my good friends and uh, Brent Johnson and crew. Low down is what they are. 302 is their combined credit score. Yeah. Um, out of Newark, Delaware. Anyway, a lot of people did not know that I am in the real estate business and I've been a licensed real estate agent almost uh, nine years now. I have had a lot of success in sales my whole life. Before I got into the real estate business, I was a property owner, uh, owned an apartment building, another building, and the house that I live in today. My motto is, get your best price on your next real estate transaction in your time frame. And that's an important motto to me, and let me tell you why. Because I want you to get your best deal on your next real estate transaction. If you're buying or selling, 
you want to get the best value for your money or your property. So if you're buying a piece of property, um, there's a lot of deals on the market today that you can walk into that actually will have equity when you walk in the door. You can buy a house for 100000 That is actually going to appraise for 120, dollars 130000 or more. You can buy a house for 200000 That may appraise for more. And that's important in today's market because in three or four years, the market continues to decline. At least you won't be upside down whether you pay cash or you have a mortgage. You don't want to lose money on any transactions, folks. You want to keep your money. You work hard for your money. A lot of people don't realize that they take their money and they pay bills and the money's gone. When you put your money into your home, you have invested it into an asset. And a lot of times your position on that asset is based on where you purchased it, not what you sell it for. That makes sense to you. Give me a call, 302-423-0276. If it doesn't make sense to you, text me and call me and keep calling me until you get a hold of me and I'll meet you in person at no charge and I'll explain it to you because it's very important that you understand this in real estate and in life. You want to keep as much of your money as you can. You want to keep what you make. You want to keep your money. So it's very important. If you're selling a piece of real estate, it's very important to understand the market. Goodness gracious, in the last several years, man, I've seen people lose so much money because they would not listen to their real estate agent. Um, and a lot of real estate agents don't give straight talk advice because it hurts to hear that you know your property is not worth what you think it is. But you have to be able to tell them that. And nobody better. And I have no problem as foul mouth Al telling people, here's what your property is worth. And why it's worth that. I can explain it to you in a, in a way that it makes sense. Okay. I'm not going to sugarcoat things and say, okay, your property's worth $250,000, sir. Uh, well, let's give it a shot and see if we can market it there. And if not, then maybe we'll reduce the price because a lot of agents uh, approach it that way. But the fact is, sir, if your property is worth $210,000 because of you know these market factors that are current and active in your market, you know, the current, the, the market just previous to that says these numbers and the market before that says these numbers. So the trend is not good in your favor. And so the sooner we get into a realistic price range, um, the sooner you'll sell your property. Yes. In a market that is declining and a lot of areas in particular, real estate is a real particular thing in certain areas. Okay. Uh, real estate is stabilizing certain areas. There's an actual, um, a, a value increase. Okay. But that's very few areas and other areas it's it's heavily declining. If your property value is in the market is in a market that's declining, then you're going to get more for it today than you will tomorrow or the next day or next week or next year. And if that makes sense to you, then you have to understand the urgency in selling now. Because there's only so many sales in your area, in your particular neighborhood, market, whatever, uh, how, whatever establishes your market. And if there's five and three properties have already sold on average in that, in that, in that area, in your you know, market, in your season, and uh, we expect two more, um, we better sell next. You don't want to wait and see if you can get a little bit more money. Because in a declining market, you will not get more money if you wait. You will get less. So the sooner you get on the ball and the sooner you uh, get your property positioned properly with the marketing, which is what my studio does. We market real estate here and promote the Foul Mouth Owls show. the sooner you're going to realize your best price in that time frame. Okay. So in 2013, this studio produced the Delaware real estate show and every single property on that show sold 100%. Um, this year I'm going to, I've been putting together a plan to do it with new construction as well, because with new construction, the videos can last longer. Once I sell a residential home and someone is living there, you cannot really, um, market that property for sale or use it for exposure for my real estate business. So that was a little test that I did, kind of what I've been doing the last couple of years 
uh, while I've been going crazy with all this other stuff in my life. I've been kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't work in this new technology. And now that I've got a handle on it and the real estate market is stabilizing, uh, we are kicking ass and building a new real estate team for the new age, right? So uh, again, back to my buddies, Lowdown 302, okay? And uh, out of Newark, Delaware, you can book these guys for your party, your home, your bar mitzvah, uh, or your funeral party, whatever you want. They will actually uh, drive the hearse and carry the casket if you want them to. <laughs> these guys fucking rock. Hey, Jimmy, are you there? Hold on a second. Hold on. This is high. This is high tech shit, man. I'm fucking it up. Hold on. Oh, there you are. There you are. What's happening? I got this is a uh, foul mouth out. I got Jimmy Lee, the Jersey outlaw on the line with me. He's called in here to the show this morning. Jimmy Lee, welcome to the foul mouth out show, man. We got out your intro for the show. You come out, you go, I'm Big Al Cuz. Some people know me as Foul Mouth Al. They say I'm foul. Some people say I'm fair. I'll be honest, guys, I'm a little AC. Tonight, I'm a little DC. Ah, that's for the crazy, way you man. Paid to get in here, I'm a riot. That shit now, was... let me tell you, a black guy in the front, what's your wife's name? Bankrupt? <laughs> Listen, you know what I found fascinating about you, sir? That you know who your father is. I mean, we'd be friends in real life if I was friends with blacks. <laughs> you guys name your kids after cars like Lexus, Mercedes, Repossessed. <laughs> so here's another thing how we do. I go when I'm doing my Vegas stuff. I go, my next stop is in Lake Tahoe. Not in Lake Tahoe, but at Lake Tahoe. I'm not going swimming there, you dummy. <laughs> I wrote that one last night, and then I point to a guy in the audience, I go, hey, pal, what's your lady's name? And I pause, and I go, oh, it's one of those kind of ladies. Okay. All right. You so, get that one out? Yeah, I, I got That's it. Cute. Hey, hey, you guys that don't know Jimmy Lee, the Jersey Outlaw, he's been my comedy coach the last couple of months, and uh, this guy never stops. If you ever meet him, he's going to grab your arm, and when you try to get the fuck away, he's not going to let you go. He's going to tell you six more jokes. Let me go. Here's another one now. Right after I do my wife's love joke, I go, it's crazy now. The dog's teaching her to roll over and play dead. So I don't need any more dog jokes, and neither do you, lady. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! What else I got out? A drunk guy saw this guy last week, but he didn't see me. Uh -huh. uh, here's another one out. I was in Vegas last week. Circus Circus called me. They wanted me to play their hotel, but it's a bad deal. I had to bring my own net. Oh. 
Do you have a net? I told my wife man, on a wedding night to bring along something black and sexy. She brought Beyonce. <laughs> well, at least she, she didn't. Br- at least she didn't bring Mike Tyson. Thank you. She said to me, Al, are you attracted to smart women? I told her nobody's ever put their hand up a girl's car looking for a library card. <laughs> yeah, nobody does a brain cancer check. At a, at a point, nobody uh, grabs her by her point. fucking head and does a brain cancer check. A shout out, a shout out, a shout out to the ladies that have facial hair. <laughs> so just remember, girls, if things get tough, you can be your own boyfriend. <laughs> Tell me how this rings about. It's way more fun playing hide and seek with my cat now that she's blind. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that That's one. That's your joke, Al. Hey, man, That's no, your joke, nobody's funnier than me. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Atta boy, Al. <laughs> I was up in San Francisco, Al, in the gay area. I mean, the Bay Area. Right. I ended up in one of those cheap discount hospitals. He got sick, was in the back of a Kmart. And, uh, I mean, cheap, Al. I'm talking cheap for anesthesia. You know, the doctor says, go to sleep. I mean, cheat. <laughs> they don't Father's even... Day has got to be a very confusing day in Harlem. <laughs> I started out today, all right, Al, I got a dial tone. Jimmy, do you hate black people or something? I love black people. I mean, uh, when your show's done, sir, clean up these tables. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. We love the black. The other night, I was hanging around the clan. This son of a bitch was running from the clan. <laughs> when I got married, the guy said, you do. I said, I do. He said, you do? Man, I don't know. I think the blacks are going extinct. The last five comedy shows I did, there was only like, there was more comics on the bill than there was in the audience at all the shows. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. I'm serious. What the fuck would happen if blacks went extinct, man? The sports would suck. Fucking, uh... Oh, we'd, have no Olymp- we'd have no Olympics. No Olympics. Uh... You know, what? who would the police harass when they're bored? I mean, shit, they'd have to close down know, prisons. I, uh, Al, I, told the, I told the wife I spent $5,000 to join the parachute club. She said, what? <laughs> I told her I'm into aviation. She said, $5,000? I said, yeah, here's the receipt. She looked at it. She said, honey, you wait. It says a prostitution club. <laughs> I said, you got to be shitting me. I signed up for five jumps. <laughs> 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 I'm all right, Al. Hey, I Jimmy Lee. Black guy have here his first video. It's him robbing a 7-Eleven. Jimmy Lee, the Jersey outlaw, he never stops. This guy constantly works. He never he never stops. The only time he stops is when he's pulling teeth. The guy's constantly pulling teeth. If you go into his office, my you can believe. Al, my ex-girlfriend, Al, all she complains is when I was young, my father molested me. My father molested me. You should be lucky he paid any attention to you at all. <laughs> hey, it cost him too much. What do you think, Al? Just when you think out your luck is down and out, remember one word. What's Camden. that? What is it? Where your dreams and hopes turn to shit. <laughs> the hookers out where the dress is so high that you can see their dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm shit. I'm all right, Al. I'm hey, doing all right. I was always want to be a comedian, now, but I was afraid people would laugh. Oh, that's my line. I'm all right, Al. I'm all right. 19 years in the business, Al. Don't milk it. You got to let it go. Yeah, I got it. You got to know when to stop. I do. It's I do. over, Al. <laughs> Your career shot, Al. I just started, Don't man. Abraham Lincoln. I only been doing this six Keep months. Keep it down there in the balcony, Al. Keep it down there in the balcony or Lincoln's going to get it. <laughs> Keep it down in the balcony. I was on Letterman last week, Al, when it was my turn to sit down. They wouldn't move over. I told Dave, I said, Dave, all these years you kicked around in showbiz and you finally ended up with a desk job. I'm all right, Al. All right, I'm taking my boy for breakfast. You want me to call you later? Hey, you can give me a shout later. Hey, where's your next show at? Tell them, tell them where the next show is. What Our you got next coming up? Shows, me and Big Al, we're on the bill October 16th. Yep. Kenny Camp's Devil's Comedy Room. Yes. And in the Centerton Country Club, the 18th, we're at Comedy Cabaret at Casse Corolla in Marlton. The 25th, we are at the Taj Mahal, the Comedy Craft Shoot Show. And November 1st, we're with Frankie Diamond, who does the Neil Diamond tribute shows, the uh, VFW and Summerdale. Al Cos will beat these shows. He'll be performing some. Nobody does comedy any better than Al. I mean, he's a great comic. Ask him. I'll tell you. 
That's right. I'm going to call you a little later, pal mouth. I love you. All right, Jimmy. I love you too, Jimmy Lee. Everybody, let's give it up for Jimmy Lee, the Jersey Outlaw. We will. Give it up for the Jersey Outlaw. He Talk just... to you in a bit, my boy. Love you. All right, love you too, man. I'll talk to you later, brother. All right, so... Uh... That was Jimmy Lee, New Jersey Outlaw. So that's my other gig I've been doing lately is some comedy on the side. And uh, you know what's great about comedy is I don't have to count on anybody. I was in a lot of bands and, and uh, performance things that we, where we, were, um, we had to count on other people. And it worked out when we had committed people. And sometimes, you know, things change in people's lives and uh, kind of throws a head spin when you're counting on three or four or five or six other people. But with comedy, it's just me. And I set my time to rehearse, write my material, develop my material, put it on a set, rehearse, 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 try to memorize all this stuff. Next thing you know, I got a ton of stuff. None of it's memorized. (laughs) So now I'm performing. So uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, final development and memorizing and comedy. And it's a lot of fun. Um, So I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to pull up some... uh, what do we got here today? We are talking about, um, shoot, I got some stuff that I recorded over the years that I can play for you guys. Oh, I got some funny shit. People I used to hang out with, I recorded them by, uh, Accident, of course. I didn't even know I was recording them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My neighbor came over, and uh, me and Squig had him smoke a, a, a joint of oregano. He thought it was marijuana. He's like, where'd you get the marijuana? We were like, oh, some kid left it here. We're not going to smoke it. You can have it. <laughs> so uh, he smoked that. We recorded it, and this one girl I dated was drunk, talking some craziness, talking about dirty stuff, and... Uh, another time she was mad and one time she broke up with me and one time she was just being an asshole when I recorded all that. Let's see what else we got in here. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be listening to some of these bits that I've created and recorded in their absolute rawest form. Um, they are way more developed today and they're very much a part of my act at different places, times, Um, and when appropriate. So um, through this show, you're going to find out how I became and developed as a comic and figure out how I got to where I am today, which uh, isn't very far. But check this out. Advertisement for RandomFilth.com to be played on the Foul Mouth Al Show. Are you tired of motherfuckers doing shit behind your back? Did she steal your man? Did he fuck your best friend? Ask him about that shit. And then take it out. And then and then lay it all out on randomfilth.com. Hey. Hey, what are you doing calling her? What are you doing calling her? You fucking her? Nah, baby, I ain't fucking her. Fuck that shit. We gonna hash this out on random motherfucking filth, bitch. That's right, on randomfilth.com. You can hash out all your differences in a public forum where people are signed up to see this shit and the rest of the world don't have to view it. This is a place where motherfuckers want to see your dirty laundry and you're more than welcome to air it out since you like to put it out in public. Get the fuck off Facebook and get on randomfilth.com, motherfuckers. This joke's called The Kill. Hey, man. What's your name? Yeah, we know each other, don't we? Good, beautiful wife. Lo- I haven't seen you in years. It looks like everything's going good for you. You used to be a lot thinner. I see that, you know, you gained a little weight there, huh? Yeah. Um, and she's fattening you up, ain't she? That's what happens. You get a good wife. She gives you food. She takes care of you. She fattens you up. How many guys in here have, by a show of hands, have gained weight since they started seeing their girl? That's fantastic. She's taking good care of you. Let me tell you what's happening, fellas. It's a little known phenomenon that women keep a secret. It's called the kill. They fatten you up for the kill. 
Imagine that, huh? They fatten you up for the kill. And here's how it works. They fatten you up. Later on in life, they find a good-looking guy with lots of money. They dump your ass, and your fat ass is dead in the water. Who the hell wants something like this? Look at this guy. Jim, stand up. Let everybody see what happened to you, man. Who the hell wants this guy? Jim, I'm sorry about your luck. I know life could have been a lot better for you. Good luck over there. Um, and, you know, just think about it. Think about it. Maybe you want to hit the gym or something like that. You know? Don't let them fatten you up for the kill, fellas. Oh, my goodness. What the hell was I thinking playing that stuff? That was crazy. That was um, <clears throat> a couple old jokes that I had in there from a while ago, you know. So uh, so I, I, I get an idea for jokes and I record them into my phone. And then when I sync my phone up to my computer, they end up in my computer. So that's what that that noise was if it made it to this show. But um, I've got a lot of uh, questions and requests about photography. Um, and I have done some photography. I am not an official photographer. I don't have a license to do photography business. Um, the studio does photography as part of what it does. Um, so I guess I'm licensed to, and able to do it. Um, uh, but I've been doing photography for like girls are doing pinups. Um, I did a set of nudes for a girl. Um, and I, I just take random pictures. This year, the sky has, been, has amazed me. Um, and I've taken some awesome pictures of the sky. I even started doing that uh, over a year ago when I got my really nice SDSLR, my Nikon. And, um, you know, this year the sky has just caught my eye and I look at it so different since I've gotten this nice camera. But the, uh, the cool thing is the, the new iPhone that I have, um, has an amazing uh, camera and, uh, the, um, the, all the details in that camera and the things you can do with the camera when you're taking the picture are just awesome. Uh, and also, of course, there's Aviary and the Photoshop Express, both free sets of software where you can edit these pictures right on the phone. It is, it's awesome. So I have, I have definitely become uh, a photography bug. I love taking pictures. Um, I love having a camera in my phone everywhere I go so I can get a nice, clean, clear shot, the ability to edit it right on my phone, and then, of course, upload it to my Facebook to share with all my friends and fans. So um, check that out. Um, I do, from time to time, um, take a do photography, um, and I'm trying to build a portfolio. So I, I have uh, turned people down. I'm not really interested. And I really have to see something uh, in somebody to um, to want to do a photography session. It takes me a little bit of time. Uh, I like to get in a zone and comfortable with my subject and take some time and get in there. Uh, maybe try some different outfits uh, and just get away from, sometimes get away from the screens uh, and the backdrops and just try different settings and different things and we can shift stuff around uh, anywhere in the studio and, and, and anywhere in the house here um, where we um, where we keep all this stuff so um, it's a lot of fun but I don't I don't just do it for anybody and I don't do it for money at this point um, I'd have to be an interesting project um, I definitely would do it for the right amount of uh, money for the right project um, and I'm not just saying in this area, I do travel across the country. Um, I haven't left the country for anything like that yet, but, uh, I will travel to do comedy. I will travel for real estate. I will travel for, uh, the right photography opportunity. And if I approach you to do pictures, I'm not just a pervert. Um, I am foul mouth owl, um, budding photographer. My photos have came out great. Um, I've shared some of them on my, um, Facebook page. Check them out. Um, um, so I'm not just a pervert. I am a budding photographer. I am a pervert too. I, I, I got to admit that. But, um, you know, I get into the mind, into the heads of the subject. And if it's a sexy photo shoot, yeah, it's, it's that kind of feeling. And we have a great time and, uh, we just, you know, we're comfortable and boom, we have, a, we just get it done. And that is ultimately what it's all about. Having fun, being comfortable, getting in that zone and, uh, 
you know, the subject has to have that feel and look. And as a photographer, I have to, you know, see that through the camera and in the eyes of the people that are going to be looking at my pictures. So I'm very particular about what I put out and who I work with. So, um, anywho, the Foul Mouth Al Show has been brought to you today by um, Jimmy Lee to Jersey Outlaw, Foulmouth Al, um, Al Lescovar Studios. Al Lescovar on Facebook is my real estate persona. Check me out there. Like me, friend me. I don't have a like there. Actually, I do Delaware Real Estate Show. You can like that page. Um, we're looking for some more houses to put on the Delaware Real Estate Show. If you got a piece of property to sell, I specialize in real estate marketing. Um, and I'm an expert negotiator, so whether you're buying or selling, I can help you get your best deal on your next real estate transaction and get your best price in your time frame. So give me a call, 302-423-0276. That's going to conclude today's version of the Foul Mouth Al Show. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on October 16th in Pensgrove, New Jersey at the Centerton Country Club. Um, I think tickets are $10 or $5. If you tell them you're there with foul mouth out, they might charge you extra. Last time I bombed there, um, insulted some people, offended women. It was brutal. It was brutal. You know, they said if I changed my name to Al C and took the F word out of my act, it would go over okay. You know, they said I had um, the sexual overtones work great. And, you know, my act is like sexual hell's bells. There's no overtones in there. So... Um, I do have a different act right now that I'm going to take over there this month, and we're going to try it out and see how it works. Um, I try to be a versatile comedian and father and host on your show. So here's some great music to take you out. See you next time on the Foul Mouth Out Show. Blow me. Keep your shit in shape. could have a real good time with her, a little smoke and a bag of wine. But if I seem a little perplexed, if any of these feelings should escape my lips, well, I should not have lied. I'm not the kind of guy who's cool with whatever, just down all the time, no. I just need to get out of my head. Oh, my Just pretend, no. Cause when 